I was uh, conceived in Hawaii. This is how the story goes. Conceived in Hawaii, born in Canada. My mother was an immigrant to this country, and she was raised in, born in Japan, raised in Japan, and then her both her parents died, basically, and she was raised in Hawaii in the 30s. My father is from a Minnesota family, Duluth, Minnesota, and his family drifted out to California, and then he was stationed in Hawaii, and that's how it all began. I was in San Francisco from about six months old till four and a half years old, late 40s, when people from San Francisco moved to the peninsula. And so in the late 40s, moved to uh, San Bruno, California. Looking back on it, when I'm trying to figure things out, I was the kid that organized everything. I organized the Kool-Aid stand. The Kool-Aid stand wasn't good enough for me, so I added a puppet show. <laughs> then I'd have a Kool-Aid stand and I had a circus. So I was, I've been an organizer and an activist from day one when I look back on it. It kind of makes me laugh. In high school, I was uh, um, a rah-rah. I was in the finals for cheerleader, but then uh, I got a D-minus in shorthand. Worst grade I ever got. And I got kicked out of the finals for um, cheerleader, which was like really a bummer for me. But I became rally commissioner, you know, you recover and <laughs> do something else. And uh, the captain of the football team and I fell in love. And uh, that was pretty amazing. We went steady from the time I was 16, got married when I was 19. And by the time I was 24, I'd been married five years and had two kids. And he was teaching high school where we met. Everything was perfect. Great husband, home, organic garden. It's the 60s. And I started reading. I watched a lot of talk shows, which were different then. And they'd have these feminists that came on that were talking about the women's movement. And so we started talking about women's rights and what's going on. And I remember changing from Mrs. to Ms. And my father's family was upset with me. It was so disrespectful, blah, blah, blah. And I'm thinking, really? Because my husband didn't mind at all. He thought it was, oh, that's kind of cool. You know, he's real laid back. But my consciousness was broken open. And I got involved with the anti-Vietnam War movement. And as a housewife, you know, with my limited, you know, experience of the world, really, even if I was in my mid-20s, where had I gone? I hadn't gone anywhere, really. There came a point in our marriage, and this was in the 60s, late 60s, and everything's changing around us. Very exciting, uh, shifting in gender, the peace movement, the civil rights movement. You know, it was just like this time. And uh, we were swept away in that. And he, he was an anti-war activist, and we were, you know, it was both of us doing that. But, and there came a time in the late 60s, early 70s, where I was just crying a lot. I didn't know why. I just couldn't, I just was not happy, crying a lot. Just, it wasn't making sense since everything around me was, like, so um, exciting. And I was like a Little League mom. I was ran the art corner from at my kid's school, field trip driver, full, you know, amazing life. We just came to a point where um, I realized I stood up for myself in a way I never had. A good friend of mine um, was relaying a really moving story that had happened to her, like revealing something. And it was time for me to go home and cook dinner for the kids. And I made a decision to stay there with her during this time. I'd never done that before. And I called and told him. He go, OK, fine. But then I, I said, I'm going to stay with her. I'm going to stay overnight. And he just kind of backed away. And it was the first time I ever kind of just did some, you know, like said, no, you, you can cook dinner because he cooks sometimes too. After that, I just remember I was still crying and trying to figure things out. And um, I'll never forget this. He looked at me and he goes, I figured out why you're crying. He just said, um, you need to leave. He goes, you've never, ever had a life of your own. And he goes, I'll, I'll have the kids. 
He goes, you can't do what you need to do. As soon as I heard it, it was right. And within six weeks, I mean, we invited my sisters and their husbands over, my mom, and we just told everybody at the same time, we're trying this out, although we knew. And um, six weeks later, I had an apartment and I was still the teacher's aide at school. You know, like I was still doing it. I was about a mile away from the kids. And that's the hardest thing I've ever done in my entire life is leave those kids. So he stayed in the suburbs. And I, uh, after a year living in, near my kids' school, I moved to San Francisco. And I had, a few years earlier, uh, started college. I took a night class, which was huge for me. I was just like, oh, wow, I really like this. And so I'd been going to night school, and I started going to school full-time at San Francisco State, right when people were organizing to found the Women's Studies Department. So I got involved with all that, and of course it was complete lesbian, women's, feminist, amazing people, leaders that I got to meet and have them as my professors, mentors, and I came out as a lesbian because <laughs> I knew I always loved women. I, I, knew I was attracted to women. Not, I think being raised Catholic and being so repressed, I didn't connect it with sexuality or anything. It was just like I really was attracted to, to women. But it kind of the feminist movement put it, just kind of lined it up. There's theory. Oh, my God. There's, it was a, uh, an awakening, an amazing awakening.